Hello and welcome to a fresh new episode of Science Monitor, our weekly update on all that is happening in the field of science and technology in and around the country. I am Ashwarya with you. From fossil evidences buried in earth to diffusing landmines from the sky. We have many exciting stories coming up. Let's first take a look at the headlines. India was by no means isolated as thought new links found. Schoolboy designs anti-landmine drone strikes a 50 million deal. India's a black hole pioneer bids are deal. And in our In Focus segment today, we will discuss about the recent ranking of the Indian universities and the need for it. And now news in detail. Well, India is the land of a diverse species of flora and fauna, many of them highly specialized and endemic to this landmass. Now, based on this, the geologists have always believed that India, when it broke apart from Pangaea, drifted alone in oceans for 30 million years before colliding with the Eurasian plate. But recent fossil evidence from India is all set to topple this isolation theory. In fact, the evidence suggests that India must have been always connected. According to the most accepted theory, for hundreds of millions of years, all the land of Earth was joined together in one large mass, a supercontinent known as Pangaea. Then, about 200 million years ago, Pangaea began to drift apart as tectonic forces broke it into two pieces, Laurasia in the north and Gondwana land in the south. Earth's crust, called the lithosphere, consists of 15 to 20 moving tectonic plates. The heat from radioactive processes within the planet's interior causes the plates to move, sometimes forward and sometimes away from each other. This movement is called plate motion or tectonic movement. It has also been believed that India, which was once part of the Gondwana land and which also included what we know as Antarctica, Australia, South America and Africa, gradually drifted away towards the north and collided with the Eurasian plate. The unique species of plants and animals that the Indian subcontinent harbours led researchers to believe that during its long transit through oceans, India was an isolated landmass and no exchange took place between India and other landmasses. But this long-standing theory might have just been proved wrong, as a team of researchers from the University of Bonn have dug out evidence that suggests otherwise. The evidence comes in the form of 54 million years old fossils of insects called biting midges. The fossils have been discovered from amber in seams of coal near Surat. According to the research published in the journal PLOS-1, researchers have investigated the fossils of 38 biting midges and compared them with examples of a similar age from Europe and China. The team could assign 34 of 38 of the fossils into genera that are already known based on their similarity with the fossils of biting midges discovered from the Baltic and fusion in northeast China. Scientists also confirm that the descendants of these fossilized insects can still be found today in Germany. The discovery strongly indicates that unlike the popular belief, an exchange did occur between the supposedly isolated India, Europe and Asia in ancient times. The age of drones is dawning and adding to the many possible applications of drones is a class 10th student. Well, the schoolboy has designed a novel and landmine drone to detect and diffuse landmines. What is more, with the design, he has stuck a deal worth 50 million.
2017 has dawned with new promises and the world is looking eagerly towards many new technologies and novel applications of existing technologies. One much anticipated technology are the drones. While the trend is already in motion, 2017 is likely to see large-scale use of drones to deliver specialized services. These range from healthcare in remote areas and search and rescue operations to security and surveillance and even scientific data collection. But adding to these widespread applications is one more and a very crucial one by a class 10th Indian student. Yes, Harsh Vardhan Zala, a class 10 student has designed a drone that can detect landmines. The design of the anti-landmine drone which can help the armed forces to detect and defuse landmines has been approved by the Gujarat Council on Science and Technology who will further explore the possibility of commercial production of these drones. Our drone will be 2 feet up from the ground. So we detect landmines from the ground and then after that, the landmines are put on the ground and we put the drone on 50 grams of detonator and the drone will fly. And then the drone will automatically blast the detonator which we can destroy the landmines Destroy the young talent has signed an MOU with the government of Gujarat during the recently held Global Investors Summit at Vibrant Gujarat and has bagged 50 million Indian rupees for the production of the drone designed by him. According to the MOU, Zala in the coming days will work on this project with Gujarat government. The drone is designed to remain two feet above the ground level and detect landmines. The drone also carries a detonator weighing 50 gram, which automatically blasts, destroying the landmine in the process. The drones will save the lives of hundreds of our brave soldiers who are guarding our borders. Science Monitor is deeply saddened to report the demise of India's black hole pioneer Professor C. V. Vishweshwara, now credited with the discovery of quasi-normal modes which made the detection of gravitational waves possible. Professor Vishweshwara was a man of many facets. Professor Vishweshwara passed away on the late night of 16th of January. He was 78 years old. When the millennium's greatest discovery, the detection of gravitational waves was first announced last year, the entire scientific community had one brilliant mind to thank. That was Professor C. V. Vishveshwara, India's black hole pioneer. It was his calculations that succeeded in giving a graphical form to the signal that would be emitted by two merging black holes, the waveform detected by LIGO. Professor Vishveshwara has been one of the first to study black holes even before they had been so named. He made theoretical contributions to understand how black holes may collide and merge into each other. In this context, he is credited with the discovery of quasi-normal modes or ring-down signals which are the characteristic waveforms of the gravitational waves scattered during the merger of black holes. The ring-down signal is like radiation from a bell that is stuck with a hammer and sounds like a bell's fading ringing sound. This discovery has largely contributed to the understanding of black holes and generation of gravitational waves. Besides, being a pioneering astrophysicist, Professor Vishveshwara was also an institution builder. 
He was the founding director of the Jawaharlal Nehru Planetarium in Bengaluru and was the brain behind setting up the three-year program for undergraduate students called the Research Education Advancement Program in Physical Sciences. Professor Vishveshwara is also acclaimed for his tireless efforts to popularize science through cartoons and his books like Einstein's Enigma, Black Holes in My Bubble Bath, etc. As this stellar mind bid adieu to us on late night of 16th January at 78 years, he has left behind a black hole in global science the entire scientific community in paying homage to Professor C. V. Vishveshwara, whose contributions to science shall forever be remembered. And now it is time to take a very short break. We'll be back with more science news. Keep watching Science Monitor. Welcome back after the break you're watching Science Monitor. Let us now have a look at some important science and technology activities happening in India and abroad in our next segment Science Express. Following the completion of all the internal approval procedures, India is now officially an associate member of CERN. The membership follows the agreement India had signed with CERN on November 21st, 2016. With this, India will now have full access to all the data generated at CERN and can participate in all CERN experiments. In a rapid precautionary measure, the British Antarctic Society has announced the evacuation of 88 scientists from its Haley 6 polar research base in March. The warning has been issued after the researchers having noticed a fissure that developed in the ice sheet in October 2016, but has been extending just 10 miles away from the Haley 6 research station. This is in view of the fact that chasm may develop further and it could be risky in the winter with 24-hour darkness and frozen seas. Scientists will return to their duties at the research centre once winter has passed. The former US astronaut Eugene Cernan, who became the last astronaut to walk on the moon, has bid the world adieu. He was 82 years old. Cernan belonged to one of the first team of men to go on a spacewalk. After retiring from NASA and the Navy in 1976, he has been instrumental in starting the Air One airline, has worked as an energy and aerospace consultant, served as chairman of an engineering company and was a space commentator for ABC News. In a fascinating new discovery, a team of researchers from the Scripps Institution of Oceanography, University of California, has discovered a new species of sea dragon. The species, called the Ruby Sea Dragon, has been filmed off the coast of Western Australia. The footage revealed that Ruby Sea Dragons lack ornate leaf-like appendages a feature that scientists had long considered to be distinguishing characteristics of all sea dragons. It also proved that the ruby sea dragon has a prehensile tail, much like sea horses, but unlike other sea dragon species. India is today known worldwide for its world-class educational facilities and training. Assessing the quality of higher education in the country for the first time, the government recently launched the National Institutional Ranking Framework Report. Well, the report ranks Indian institutions under four major categories. Well, this brings us to many questions. Which are the top ranking Indian universities? What is the need of such a ranking and how will it help us improve the education system? Well, join us as we try to seek answers to these questions in our In Focus segment.
in the knowledge driven economy of today education is the key as data and new knowledge gets generated every minute any nation that fails to educate its citizens and keep them updated is sure to fall behind others in terms of development hence while quality education has become a mandate so has time to time assessment of the quality of education students across the world are assessed for their performance in the form of exams and vivas but what about how the education institutions are faring this is where the concept of ranking of educational institutions comes into picture education has today become a dynamic process that takes into account the need of multiple stakeholders and ranking is being accepted as a move to improve things for institutes of higher education today various international rankings such as the quacorelli simons list of top 200 universities globally times higher education and shanghai nature ranking etc assess the quality of education in institutions worldwide and rank them the rankings are based on various parameters assessing the standards of educational institutions in the country the government has also released the first of its kind ranking of educational institutions of india namely the national institutional ranking framework report The National Institutional Ranking Framework report covers 3500 institutions and has ranked the top 10 institutions among four categories namely university engineering pharmacy and management The ranking is done by any institute by any authority by any agency we should know what are the parameters of that ranking because you know student will choose a college on uh, on the basis of the rank but once he joins an institution or a university or a college after that he has to study uh, you know that uh, the ranking will not directly affect the performance it has nothing to do with the performance of the student it is one of the parameters which students use uh, to judge where should we join in the report is based on various strict parameters such as teaching learning and resources research professional practice and collaborative performance graduation outcome outreach and inclusivity and perception it also takes into account opinions of students alumni parents employees and the public for the ranking with emphasis on teaching and learning resources graduation outcomes and research hence while quality assessment is a broad term ranking plays multiple roles it is indicative of the teaching resources available in an institution in terms of faculty and infrastructure also in today's rapidly changing world no society can remain isolated better connections means more exchange and hence more development and it is seen that most of the well placed institutions have extended collaborative programs which helps student development and learning and education system needs to be inclusive especially in countries like india with various systems syllabus and cultures ranking is indicative of the extent to which an institution is able to reach out to the students and be inclusive All this brings us to the question as to how the rankings would help in the improvement of the existing education system. These parameters in turn helps us figure out the gaps and adopt effective strategies for improving the effectiveness of the core teaching and learning methods. The ranking may also at some level promote a healthy competition. where each institution strives to achieve the best quality of education catering to various groups of students while debates are on regarding the many pros and cons of the ranking system we can anticipate that with ranking based on adequate data and appropriate parameters 
the trend can be used in a positive change in the present education system. Well, that is all for this episode of Science Monitor. Do tell us how do you like our program. Our email ID is news at vigyanprasar.gov.in. You can also write into us at Vigyan Prasar C24, Kutub Institutional Area, New Delhi 110016. Well, that is all for today. We'll be back with fresh new stories on science and technology again next week. Till then, keep watching Rajasabha TV. Bye-bye.